Uh, Joe, on Jalen's ejection, what was happening from your perspective? Uh, the ref told me that he gave him the first technical because Jalen said, um, don't call that weak ass SHIT. And so he gave him a tech for that. And, um, you know, I've been on the sidelines in the NBA for five years, and I've seen players act and say things that are way more disrespectful than that. And then on on the second one, because it seemed like Jalen went to a different referee and the first one was maybe still interacting with him. What, what was happening there on the second I, one? I, I, I didn't necessarily see what was happening on the second one, but I got a, I got a clear explanation on the first one. Okay. I'm doing everything I can to not cost myself $25,000. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, D.Y. got MVP chance at the end there. He said he was horrible at the, end, the second half of the indie game. He said that? Yeah. I'm glad he did that. You already talked to him? No, oh, he this said game. after the indie oh, game. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, tonight he was pretty good. <laughs> he was okay. Yeah. What, uh, just what did you see out of him tonight? How much? No, I mean, you know, D.Y.'s a guy that, you know, you, you have to coach a little bit, but he's really hard on himself. And, you know, it goes back to he had eight turnovers. And so it's a, it starts with him because the ball's in his hands as a point guard, and he's pushing the pace. And so um, when he makes great decisions, it allows the rest of our team to make good decisions. So he did a great job navigating the game, getting the, the ball organized, and finding the balance of scoring and facilitating. Uh, Joe, the third quarter obviously has been a problem for you guys. This one was much better. What what went into making this third quarter different? I, mean, I think the guys are aware of it. And so, you know, it's, it, there's a little bit more of a heightened awareness. But, you know, you say I think we had, uh, I think it was a Philly game. We had seven turnovers in a quarter. And then we turned it over three of our first four or five possessions in the Indiana game. So, to me, that the, the, the game's connected in that way. And so when you turn the ball over, it's because you're not executing, whether you're spacing or you're screening. And you turn it over, teams get, you get cross you get in the free throws, you get transition. And, and um, we were able to really take that away in the third quarter. Um, Richard, if Chris Stops made his I think, first seven shots, um, clearly, was there anything, is this even better than we would imagined him coming back after a layoff like that? Uh, I mean, no, he was good. I thought he was, he was good. Um, you got to see a glimpse of the identity of what our team can look like um, on a nightly basis. And, um, you know, I keep saying this to the team, Success is going to look different every single night. And I thought Derek was great. I thought it was great to see Drew be aggressive. Um, I thought, you know, Chris Stapps was good. But for Jalen and Jason, there was a point where Jalen, I don't think, scored in the first. I mean, Jason didn't score in the first quarter. And Jalen had taken, like, three shots. And you couldn't tell because of they were doing other stuff. And those guys are defined by one thing. But in reality, like, that to me is success because they allowed their teammates, uh, their teammates took their pressure off of them and they facilitated and like that is what it's going to be take for us to like be great is the balance like there's going to be nights where they're going to have to be amazing and there's going to be nights where we got to play like like we did tonight and the more we can be connected and trustworthy on that uh, it's super important but I thought that was great by both of them to be facilitators and it shows that because they empowered the rest of the guys and you know we're all connected you mentioned Drew's aggressiveness. What allows him to have a night like this? Uh, the matchup. I think the matchup changed once Chris Tapps is out there. Everyone slides down, and you know there's a different matchup there. So he was able to take advantage of a smaller guard on him, and sometimes, and then just we played faster. I, I don't know the numbers on what our pace was tonight, but it just felt like we got into our spacing and we were organized. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, we were organized much faster. And when you do that, it's easier for guys to kind of make plays. Whether it's layups, he got some catch and shoot threes, and he was able to get to his spot a little bit. So. The faster we play, the more organized we are. The reads are easier for everyone to get more possessions, more opportunities. He said this morning he's kind of surprised that Derek ends up with the advantageous matchup a lot of the time. Why do you think that is, and what makes him so good at exploiting that, Derek, that is? Uh, just because he has the ability to handle, and then he has the ability to set and pick and roll. And so... Um, you know, the guy that we that, – that's where sometimes it gets into, like, are we playing like we did tonight where the matchup creates two-on-ones for everybody or are we trying to specifically get the matchup we want? And that's where sometimes where Drew's not involved because Derek has a favorable matchup and so we're running actions with Derek JTJB or Derek KPJB. And so, you know, when you are able to get to your space and, and find different ways to attack, it, it, it gets everybody involved. So it's just that balance that we have to find. Celtics 3-0 against the Knicks this season. Coming up, we get Eddie's reaction on what Jalen Brown had to say to the refs and what got him the technical. And also, we hear from Jalen Brown coming up next. 
Celtics Post Game Plus is presented by your New England Ford dealers. Built for America. Built Ford Proud. Welcome into Celtics Post Game Plus. Chris Forsberg, Eddie House, Amina Smith here with you. The Celtics defeat the Knicks 133 to 123. We get Chris Stapps, Porzingis back. A good mm -hmm, third quarter mm -hmm. from the Celtics team. Forsberg, what was your biggest takeaway after this game? Yeah, so like I, I feel like I could do this every night, but to come on here and just gush about Derek White for a little bit. I remind you that there was a publication that said he was not a top 100 player. And if you look <laughs> at the leaderboard for plus minus in the NBA, and not that that is the end all be all, but it is a good little barometer for how a player is faring. Derek White is now plus 180 something and is going to lead the NBA after today. He was plus 21 today, his sixth game, where he's plus 20 or better, including like a plus 36 game in there. I, I'm not surprised by it. I'm just telling you that he impacts winning on such a high level, and he is exactly what this team needs. Sort of that selfless guy who doesn't care if you think he's the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh option on this team. He just goes out there and does his job every night. And while this was a very balanced effort, I will come away yet again thinking, man, what a luxury Derek White is to have on this team. And we should really try to figure out where he ranks. It's not. He's in the top 100. He's in the top 50 at this point, probably. Eddie, I feel like we run out of good things to say about Derek White because every single night he's out there on the floor, he's doing whatever the Celtics need in order for them to get a win. Yeah, and, and some nights it ain't even – it's not scoring. Some night it is scoring. Like tonight, going out and getting 30 is – well, the, the game against Miami, he had to turn up and, and find a way to win that way, and he was the big reason why they won against Miami earlier in the season, scoring big points. But it's just the small winning plays, and it's defense. It's stuff that doesn't show up in the stat sheet a lot of the times, you know, pressuring the basketball, making a guy get off his spot where they're supposed to be initiating their offense. Their offense is a little bit. To, to really show what he could do. And uh, I, I don't know. I, like, I don't want to ever take it for granted, but uh, the Celtics would not be the level of like championship potential without someone like Derek White out there. And let's switch gears to Chris Stapps Porzingis. Joe Mazzulla talked about this in his press conference. He said, with having Chris Stapps Porzingis out there, you could see the potential of this Celtics team. Forsberg, what is the identity that this Celtics team is forming when Chris Stapps Porzingis is on the floor? I mean, you saw that offense in the first half, mm -hmm. right? 74 points or whatever the number was. I'm sitting there thinking, I mean, I know they gave up a lot, and I would like to see them dig in a little bit more. Và ngày hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn nghe câu chuyện Hãy nhân ái với một robot trong quyển 28 của Doraemon Mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện Và mong các bạn ủng hộ và chia sẻ kênh giúp mình Và ngày hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn một tập truyện Mé đặt hàng bộ siêu tập nhân vật Trong quyển 28 của Doraemon Mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện và mong các bạn ủng hộ và chia sẻ kênh giúp mình. Và ngày hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn một câu chuyện mô hình hòn đảo tỷ lệ 1 trên 1 trong quyển 28 của Doraemon. Mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện và mong các bạn ủng hộ và chia sẻ kênh giúp mình. Và ngày hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn một câu chuyện Hộp nuôi cấy ngọc trai trong quyển 28 của Doraemon. Mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện và hãy chia sẻ và theo dõi kênh giúp mình. Lại nằm rồi, sao lúc nào cậu cũng lăn lê thế nhỉ? Lăn lê thì không được à? Cầm lấy này. Ủa, cậu mua truyện tranh cho tớ cơ à? Lạ chưa kìa. Ôi ôi, Hattori xứng thật, thành thạo mọi pháp thuật của Ninja. Tớ biết đây chỉ là chuyện tranh thôi, nhưng giá như cậu có món bảo bối, giúp tớ tinh thông, nhẫn thuật thì hay biết mấy. Có đấy, thật không? Đây là đầu nghề tu luyện của Ninja. Có đấy, thật không? Đây là đồ nghề tu luyện của Ninja. Ủa, quên lấy đồ. Quên lấy lộn đồ rồi. Không phải cái này. Đồ nghề tu luyện của Ninja. Nhưng mà liệu cậu có sử dụng được không? Tớ nói trước, cậu đừng có coi thường. Nhẫn thuật để tu luyện thành Ninja phải có sức chịu đựng phi thường, cậu hiểu chưa? 
sức chịu đựng phi thường. Dù đau đớn, khổ sở tới mức nào, cậu vẫn phải cắn răng, nhẫn nại để đạt được sức mạnh cả về tinh thần và thể xác. Đó mới chính là quá trình tu luyện ninja nhân chính. À, video của mình đến đây là kết thúc. Xin chào các bạn và hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở các video tiếp theo. Chào mừng các bạn đã đến với kênh youtube của mình. Và ngày hôm nay mình xin sẽ review cho các bạn câu chuyện thuốc nhân số lượng trong quyển 17 của Doraemon. Mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện và mong các bạn theo dõi và ủng hộ kênh của mình. Và ngày hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn sách ghép hình trong quyển 17 của Doraemon. Mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện và mong các bạn theo dõi và ủng hộ kênh của mình. Và ngày hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn một câu chuyện tuần báo Nobita. Và mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện và mong các bạn ủng hộ và theo dõi kênh của mình. Và ngày hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn một câu chuyện cổ đại phiêu lưu ký nằm trong cuốn 17 của Doraemon. Mình xin mời các bạn cùng mình lắng nghe câu chuyện và mong các bạn ủng hộ kênh và theo dõi kênh của mình. Cậu thỏ dài cái gì thế? Khó sợ quá. Cái bánh bao nhân động này nếu ăn nghe thì rất ngon. Nhưng sẽ hết Nếu không muốn Nếu không ăn thì vẫn còn Nhưng lại không thể thưởng thức được vị ngon của nó Ước gì cái bánh nè ăn mãi không hết nhỉ Thế thôi cú. thế thôi chứ gì Cậu có cách giúp tớ à Đây là thuốc nhân số lượng Công hiệu với bất cứ thứ gì Nhỏ thuốc vào bánh hả Ơ ờ, mà thôi Không được đâu Nguy hiểm lắm Ơ ờ, kìa sao vậy chỉ nhân đôi số lượng bánh bao thì có gì nguy hiểm Cậu đừng làm nhằn nữa Mau làm cho tớ đi Nhưng mà phải hứa với tớ một điều Là cậu phải ăn cho kỳ hết số bánh bao tăng thêm Không để lại một mẫu vụ nào Được tớ hứa Ê tớ có Thấy tăng lên đâu Cứ 5 phút sẽ nhân lên gấp đôi Sau 5 phút đầu tiên Một cái bánh sẽ biến thành hai Hiểu rồi, thêm 5 phút nữa, 2 sẽ biến thành 4 chứ gì? Đúng thế, sau đó 4 thành 8, rồi ha ha, nhiều vô kẻ, gần 5 phút trôi qua rồi đấy. Bánh tăng lên rồi, hoan hô, tội mình mỗi đứa sơi một cái đi. Hoan đã, ăn bây giờ, để mà hết à, chỉ khó đợi 5 phút nữa, bọn mình sẽ có tận 4 cái. Tớ cóc thèm, bánh rán ngon hơn nhiều các bạn đã đến với kênh Tăng thành 4 mình. rồi Còn Mình chỉ cần để lại một cái Là muốn ăn bao nhiêu cũng có tương lai. Bắt đầu chán rồi Doraemon ơi, ra gặp bánh đi nè Nó bỏ đi đâu rồi không biết Video của mình đến đây là kết thúc Xin chào các bạn Và hẹn gặp lại các bạn Hẹn